Hey everyone, I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist, and we're going to walk around Fonce's Tavern with Mary to show us around for an abbreviated quick tour uh, of this historic building. So let's walk around. Let's go. And uh, what, to give us the general gist of Fonce's Tavern as we're kind of just walking around. Fonce's Tavern Museum is one of the only Revolutionary War museums in New York City. So anything George Washington based, anything Founding Fathers, anything Colonial Tavern, we've got it for you. Fascinating. And here we have the long room, yes. which is uh, associated with evacuation day. Associated with evacuation day in Washington's farewell. This was a host to about a slew of revolutionary activity during the 18th century leading up to the Revolutionary War, from George Washington to the Sons of Liberty. And Burr and Hamilton dined here before. Yes, uh, they did. <laughs> before having their duel. This is the room where it happened, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> That's so cool. And everything you see here dates back to at least the 1800s. I mean, we even have oysters. Yeah. yeah, oysters probably earlier because those are from the ground. <laughs> and here's the bar that you mentioned very quickly. Um, why why is it has the structure over here? It would have been yeah. caved in because at the end of the night you would like to lock up your liquor so it wouldn't be taken from anybody. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go through here. So the building dates back to when? 1719 to the Delanceys. So they originally yeah. built it probably as a mansion that they wanted to live in but never actually did mm. because by the neighborhood around it decided to urbanize it was not a likely place to raise a family it's too much noise too many shifts too much noise too much everything that went on and then uh samuel francis took over samuel francis took over in 1762 he purchased the building and opened up the uh, Queen's Head Tavern in honor of Queen Charlotte. Mm. And he opened up one of the most successful bars in New York City, basically. Ah, uh -huh, fascinating. Yeah, he had really good cooking. He offered some of the first takeout in New York City, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, yeah, if it was a considerable distance, he would send takeout orders out. So we invented Seamless. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, Delmonico's. Delmonico's had takeout back yeah. in the late 1800s. People realized yeah. that it was a good service to have. Yeah. If you couldn't come here, we'd go to you. What was the common cuisine and drink that people would eat here? Uh, not much different from what we would have eaten today. So it's yeah. a lot of like pork chops and stews mm. and very heavy meats, bread, some vegetables, even fresh fruit because there were orchards by City Hall Park. And my favorite, oyster pie, Ugh. which I actually never tried. But <laughs> Turtle soup is also a really good delicacy as well. Yeah. Here we have, so this, what's this room over here? So our McEntee Gallery is de uh, uh, dedicated to the Sons of the Revolution in the state of New York who mm. own and operate the building today. So it's about all of their efforts to preserve the 18th century traditions and politics. Here we, we have the depiction of... Washington's farewell, yeah. And so, that was Knox. Yes, yeah. he's holding the hand of General Knox. And here we have the journal of Benjamin Talmadge. Yes, so Benjamin Talmadge was one of the few people in the room who actually had the yeah. foresight to write down what happened because not everybody did. So <laughs> that is our primary document. <laughs> it's funny, since I love history so much, I'm very adamant like archiving my own life. Yeah, write everything down, folks. If I've learned anything, like, save everything. write it down. Write yeah. down everything. Because I thought to myself, I, you know, I, I don't want to presume, but just in case just anyone in case. wants to I, it comes in handy. Biographize my life. I want to give them an easy time, the historians. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it all down. <laughs> no, write down everything, always. Right. <laughs> and here we have another bust of George Washington down here. And this little thing, give us a little quick description of it. We have a fragment of George Washington's teeth. So this would have been part of one of his teeth of a part of his dentures, <laughs> which is super yucky, but also really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. 18th century dentistry was absolutely wild. <laughs> there was no anesthesia, folks. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, they either punched you in the face to knock you out or they got you drunk. No wonder he was so stoic. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have uh, things that you found yeah, excavation below, right? pieces yeah. that were found in Lower Manhattan. So you've got everything from your bayonet to your cannonballs to your belt buckles. Mm. And the punch bowl, yes. which there was a, some hard liquor in it. Oh, very, yeah. very much so. Gin mm. and rums and mm. fresh fruit. Oh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Very strong. <laughs> I speak from experience. Oh, because uh, ha so you guys have recreated this, uh, the, the drink. Yeah, so the yeah. restaurant downstairs has made a 
close enough match to what they call today presidential punch, which was based off of a fish house punch. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of all the same, but a little bit different. But still, very strong. <laughs> oh, fascinating. And let's show this sure. one over here. Yeah. They might have been drinking some punch uh, during this event as well. Yeah, so <laughs> right after the, one of the first readings of the Declaration of Independence, the soldiers ran down to City Hall Park and they tore down the statue of King George III. And all of that bronze was melted down to make bullets to fight the British Army. So that's a great symbolic event. Right. Destroying statues is nothing new. <laughs> no, but the best part is, is that they also yeah. took the crowns off the, the fence at Bowling Green Park, too. So if you still touch the tops of the fence there, you can see where they kind of hammered them off. They're sawed off, right? Yeah, because yeah. that's the original fence from the 1700s. And there's legends that they smelted it and made into bullets. Yes, or the New York Historical Society yeah. has the tale. Okay. <laughs> We've got famous New Yorker Alexander McDougall, who was a member of the Sons of Liberty. All these names Greenwich that you Village? guys know, yes. yes. All these names that you guys know, they were actual people. Oh my god. Yeah. Isn't that just New York being very creative? No, these <laughs> names came from some place. And it was a lot to do with, I think, John Jacob Astor. Mm. When he had all of that money, he started buying off like the New York City government and was just like, we're gonna rename all these streets down and just hand out like bribes and stuff. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. And here we have a, a musket. Yeah, we've got our traditional brown vest musket from the 18th century. That is a heavy, very heavy musket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how, how long does it take to reload? About 90 seconds for the most experienced. Oh my god, 90 seconds. That's very quick. That's, yeah. That's very quick. But only for the most experienced. Only for the most yeah. experienced when they knew what they were doing. I've never loaded one, but I would imagine it would take me about six to seven minutes to figure out what to load. And here we have our weapon of choice. Our halberd. I mean, it gets the job done. There's no, it's just easy to use. You just roam around with it and hit people. Right. It's just easier. It was recently referenced in the film Spider-Man, uh, oh, Far From Home. It. Yeah. yeah. It's very medieval. I like it. Well, See, you don't need to update things. Right. If they work, don't fix them. <laughs> And here we have the coolest room to see in 360 because we have all the different flags. Wonderful. So just give a like a very brief uh, overview of the flags over here. So to the beat yeah. of their own drums is about American regimental flags and the symbols that they use to represent themselves. Mm. So you see anything from a knight's arm coming out of the clouds to uh, hornet's nests to mm. timber rattlesnakes to the sun to some good old Latin and your regular stars and stripes. All things that are classic Americana today, I think. We have Julia or Die over here, Liberty or Death. They meant business, man. An appeal to heaven. Oh, that, that one sounds a little bit more, uh, a little bit lighter. Yeah, still, still the same like, we're gonna win undertone, but definitely like, <laughs> an appeal to heaven so that we're on God's good <laughs> Right. And here we have the classic American flags, the different versions of them. Mm -hmm. This one was an alternate version. Yes. These two. These two were the, the alternative versions of a very vague proclamation that said it had to be stars and stripes and red and white and blue. Which is right over here. Yeah. I really like the look of this one. It's funky, huh? Yeah, yeah. it's kind of cool. It, like it, it's like 3D if you put uh, some glasses on. Yeah. And let's show the final thing over here, which is the join the Don't Tread on Me. Don't Tread on Me. And you designed this very uh, yes. exhibition. With, with help. I can't take full credit because <laughs> I can never take full credit. And you I'm, painted this. Uh, yeah, Good. I helped paint it, but Eric helped carve it for me. So. <laughs> Everything here is a very big group effort. We're a very small but loving staff. Right. <laughs> so give us a, a quick overview of what this is. Don't Tread on Me was created by Brigadier General Christopher Gadsden during the Revolutionary War as part of a naval flag to give to Essex Hopkins who was the head of the Navy at the time, but it was not really used on water and it kind of fell into disuse until the early 20th century. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's about good old fashioned individual rights and it can mean anything to anybody, which I think is really important today. Right, and the snake being meaning uh, colonialists yeah, so at the, the time. Timber yeah. rattlesnake was a native to the East Coast, both in the Northern and Southern states. Mm. The irony today is that it is an endangered species. Oh yeah, because yeah. we, we New, uh, growing hunting. up in New York, I don't know about snakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're hunted for sport and for uh, to hang up and to do things with. So they are the irony of being on the endangered species list as one of the first American symbols is an unfortunate situation that we should try to rectify. And before we end the tour, let's uh, let's mention just one detail over here. Oh, 
Uh, the you mentioned that this was used to make sailboat. Uh, yes, sailboat uh, sails. sails. Sails right over here, and they would be hung, and they would be. Yeah, they were yeah. all hand sewn in this yeah. giant room with the high ceilings, and you would have sat on the loft and put them all together. So you would have had wow. really expansive 20, 30, 40 feet sails made in this room. Beautiful, and then right over here we have a balcony as well. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So check out Francis Tavern. Where can people find more about Francis Tavern? FrancisTavernMuseum.org, as well as our social media sites. So Francis Tavern Museum on Instagram and Francis Tavern on Twitter. Wonderful. Thank you so much for watching this uh, 360 video. Come visit the museum. It's amazing. Highly recommend it. Take your sweet, sweet time seeing all these different flags and uh, exhibitions. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a good day, everyone.